Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video and welcome to a brand new series that I'm going to start on the channel. Uh, it's called Bray Talks, a series where I talk non-stop about non-sport, non-sporting related topics. Maybe at times, maybe at times playing, um, play, at times playing games that I don't normally no, don't normally play, except this time around. As you can see, I've, I've just got my face. Um, so, um, so yeah. So this. So I was thinking about what. Well, I will. Well, I was thinking about starting this series for ages, for for for, for months now, but I just hadn't found the right time. Do it, and plus also. I thought I wasn't ready, you know, to you know share some of my, um, and this is and it's also the, the point of the series also just to, uh, I, I was serious about what I said out with my plans for the channel for this year in that video a few weeks ago, and that was I want to showcase more of myself. I want to uh, tell more of my personal stories. I want to, um, I want I want I want all of I want all all the viewers to. Um, De uh, to be to be deep up in, or I can't I can't express what it, what it, what it is, but more uh, I want to showcase more 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 about me, not just a guy that like that likes sport twenty four seven. Um and 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 let's just say um it's not just going to be about personal stories. It's it, I'm just I'm also going to be talking about some other TV related related stuff, um other issue other topics as well. Um, as I said, as I teased during my vlogs, uh, I might be talking about, might be talking about Neighbours and Home and Away on, on this series. Um, even though as I'm recording this, um, a very emotional episode of Neighbours just aired, so, uh, on Channel 10. So, if anybody's a fan of Neighbours, go watch, go, go watch on 10 Play, because it's very, very freaking emotional if, if you're a fan of Neighbours. If, if you're a fan of Neighbours, I, I, I guess. Which I which the next episode I will be you know talking about that more, so yeah, um so yeah so now or I thought about the first episode, what could I share with with you guys? And I've been holding back on this for ages for years now, um uh, and I'm gonna do it and I'm finally and I'm finally gonna do it for the first episode. And that is get it out of the way real quick. And that is um, the story of one of, if not the worst year of my life, currently so far. And and my rebuild, and I should say my rebuild from that and that, and why I am the guy I am I I am right now. So so yeah so so yeah so if you so please like this video, share this share this video. It, 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 yeah, because it, it would help out a lot with specific with this specific topic I'm talking about. Okay, so let's get started. So, uh, so the the year was 2019, the worst year, of my, worst year of my life. So it started. This whole thing started back in 2018. Now, now just before I start, before I start this this story itself, this is from my perspective. It, 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 everyone, everybody in my family has their perspective on this, including including my mum, including my mum, my stepdad. I know they're watching this video. I know, I know that they're watching this video. They have their perspective on this. I have. This is my. This is my perspective on on what these events happen. So, um, so yeah, and plus also there might be some frequent foul language as well as well during this. So, just for that, just for a bit of a warning. So yeah, so the year was twenty. So it started in twenty at the end of twenty eighteen. Um, I was off the back of the, probably two of the best years of my my life, which was at the final two years of school. Not because I was finishing school, obviously, but I had, some, had met some unbelievable people, um, and I've also met also. Um, Met some fantastic, fantastic, fantastic friends who I consider who some of most of it, I consider lifelong friends. Um, so, um, so yeah, 
and and like all eighteen year olds do, they think I uh, think it's it's so simple. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go get a job, go get money, maybe 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 buy a house, maybe move out of home, yada yada, and, and all sort of stuff. Well, like deep down, I had I had those two. Deep down, I had those I, I had those two back then in 2018. In 2018, looking back at it now, I think it was I think it was pretty naive of me to it to have those deep thoughts in me because. Because eventually, as it, as it turned out, it wasn't that simple, really. So, and, it turn, and also, throughout the turn of the year in 2019, um, I was playing cricket this time. Um, I was in, I was in my final year of playing junior cricket, and the next se- and the next season afterwards, um, I was going, I was planning on going up at the time, going up to senior cricket. So uh, uh, here, um, in in my local. In my, in my local town, in my local town, pretty much. Um, the team that I was playing with, uh, play, the team I was playing with, I wasn't playing for Maui, but uh, playing for my town, my hometown here in Maui. Um, I was playing for a team that that is based about, I think, about five minutes down down the road from being down the highway, down the Princess Highway, which is Trafalgar. I well. It was a bit complicated than that. So, I was playing at. So, if you guys don't, if you guys don't know, Moe here where I live, um, and you, and basically the next town, which is Newborough, is separated by a little bridge. Let's put it that way. It's separated by a little bridge. It's not even. It, it, they might as well just merge the town, ta- merge the two towns, pretty much, because it's that that that. Because basically crossing over a little bridge, and boom, you're you're boom, you're, in, you're into new bar, you're in the new borough, and then same two, cross the bridge again, boom, you're back in the money. So there you go. So, so I was playing for that cricket club. I, I played for Mo, for Moe Cricket Club earlier on in my junior cricket like junior cricket career, um, until I until they couldn't field a junior side, so I had to go to play for New Borough Cricket Club, which. Which I still, which I had, which um, met some wonderful people there as well. Which I still, which I still also consider to be lifelong, uh, to, be, to be lifelong friends too. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't for this particular season. They couldn't field an under. I was playing under 16s for this time. Um, and you might be thinking to yourself, um, why I was 18. You might be thinking I'm eight. I was 18 at the time. Why would you? Why are we still playing under sixteens? Because uh, because I was allowed to because of because of my dis- because of my because of my disability, which I which I'll get to in a bit. Um. So so yeah. So unfortunately, because of that, um, there was three of us, me included, uh, that were still playing under sixteens this time. We went over the traff, which back then. They were they were the best side in the in the re- they were probably the best side in uh, they were the best junior side in the re- in the region. Um, at, throughout the whole at the whole of uh, whole of the Trove Valley, we were uh, the, the Traff. Were, uh, they were the they're the best at their, best at every junior sport, footy, cricket, you name it. They are the that well from what I've heard, from what I've recently I've heard not anymore but back, but back when I was playing they were they they were best at everything um junior, as I said junior footy junior cricket you name it you they are the best in in in, in, in the trove in, in this in, in the region that I'm living in so I got the chance to play for them um which uh, we, and then we ended up winning we ended up winning through the finals I played a major, major part in it well not major part in it but some part in it um, and uh, and we ended up, and the final ended up was that was a new borough, and we, and was I remember it was a very hot day, and well not a very hot day, but it was sort of a smoky. It was also smoky as well, because I think there was like some people were like burning off back there, uh, uh, burning off. So it was like it was like all smoking in that. Uh, but we ended up winning the final, um, and. Um, now, we ended up winning that final, obviously. So I ended my time in junior cricket on a on a on a winning on a winning note. 
um, because my first year and how probably my first year of junior cricket my, in under 14s, I lost the final. Uh, and then obviously I ended up in the last year and ended, ended up winning it with the same team that ended up beating me in my first year. So yeah, you go. Uh, but at the end, but yeah, it, so everything was good. Um, to make those better, the Melbourne Renegades ended up winning the BBL, BBL ended up winning the, the BBL title uh, in the mo in in the most incredible final we've ever seen. Um, mind you, still I uh, still that happened. That happened what? What six years ago? Almost six years ago. And uh, well, actually, yeah, yeah, literally six, uh, no, almost, almost six or so years ago, five or six years ago, I still can't believe how we won that. Still can't believe it. Um, yeah, yeah, and I remember because I was playing cricket that day too, and we got, and I got home, um, and watched the final, and uh, with me, with me, Pop, obviously, who, obviously, is a Melbourne Renegade supporter, as well with me. And because obviously they're black and red, same as Essendon um, colours, so that's, that was pretty easy. Why we uh, gone for them, and we ended up and we ended up and that's and we ended up celebrating that too. Um, and and it obviously you know it, there was high hopes about the about Essendon's twenty nineteen season. What could that what can that produce? So yeah, um, and and we went to uh, and then we went to obviously um, one game which was the St Kilda game. Uh, me and me pop, obviously, um, we ended up losing the game, unfortunately. Um, that was back when pretty much we were terrible in that in that in that 2019 season, and and it was all going good. It was all going, you know, sunshine and rainbows for me that year. Then, uh, then the Easter weekend came, when, um, when the Easter weekend came. Where where things started going downhill pretty quickly, um, for me, for me personally, um, so 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 it all started when um when it, it all started when it, because pop I me mean, pop was having issues with his toe. He he, he apparently for for some reason had an effect, had an infected toe, um. And I sort of, and I sort of, and I wasn't that concerned to be honest about it because I thought, oh, it's these, it's just an infected toe, infected toe. It's not, 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 it's not going to kill him or anything like that. But, but yeah. Um, and suddenly he, and he was taking these pills, uh, or yeah, taking these pills to, um. Aid, uh, aid the healingness of, of this infected toe. Um, same time as this was happening, and, and also he was he also had this bandaged up as well. By the way, just to uh, make it better as well. Um, and at the same time, my uncle and, and, and his family came along for for one of my, for my youngest cousin's christening. Um, at that at that time. And then about four days later, I woke up, I think it was on a Wednesday, on a Thursday morning, my mum woke me up and told me that me pop was in hospital. And he apparently collapsed. He apparently woke up, apparently woke up. Um, I'm not going to explain it all in detail because this is private pretty much. Um, but but he just collapsed. And... And apparently, apparently, I, I, I hear I hear different stories from what I heard. That n my nan saw me pop go down. She she tried to pick him up. She she's not a she's a very she's she's not a, she. Uh, my pop is a very tall is a very tall man. And then and then there's my nan who's a pretty a pretty. A, a, or I'm not gonna say smallish woman, but uh, but yeah, but uh, but she's. There's somewhere thereabouts. He's trying to lift me pop up, and uh, she couldn't do it. So basically, she basically straight away ran the ambulance, um, and they took it took him to hospital. Uh, I was a bit I was a bit concerned about it, pretty much, and uh, and and yeah, and I just didn't know really didn't know really what what it was all about really at this time at this stage. Um, so yeah, so this is where it all started going downhill for me. Then. While that whilst it's going on, at the same time, 
Um, I, uh, my mum was trying to get me into the workplace. Was trying to get me into it, and she underlined what this workplace was. Like she, what she wanted me to, to do. Uh, wanted me to do. It was called La Trove Valley Enterprise, where they do, um, you know, you know, like gardening stuff, like mow, like mowing, mow, mowing lawns for, you know, for different people, you know, houses and, and farms that sort of stuff. Then, um, and then obviously they do recycling and stuff and all that. So that's what she was trying to get me into to 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 work. Um, but I but for that to happen, they they said you know that I need NDIS uh, approval to to get into this. Um, she, and she, she probably, probably would have thought easy peasy, just, you know, signing some things, you know, just proof, proof of my disability and that, and, uh, and we'll move on. Wrong, because, because straight up they said that they needed proof of my disability, which mum, my mum was like, huh? Pro, I, 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 I'm just guessing here. I'm just guessing here. She was like, "Huh, what? Like, why?" It's like in the case of why do I need? Why do I need proof of my son's disability? Because she did the same thing to my, to my brother, and I, and it was fine. Just didn't it didn't need to. With me as as an eighteen year old, why do I need approval? Why I need proof of my disability? So straight up, she uh, she uh, because. Um, tries to track down the doctor that diagnosed me, um, when I was four of intellectual autism. Now, that's what I have. Um, both me and my brother have, both have autism. I don't know what his is. I know mine's intellectual, I know, which is basically, out in the public, I just go, I just go full and shine and shine. So, I, I, I just, in social situations, I get... I'm comfortable really, really, pretty quickly, really. Um, for me, that yeah, intellectual it, 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 it's not my strength. It's it, intellectual is not my strength. That's why it, it's called that, to be honest. But uh, but my mum tried to track down the doctor that um, tried to yeah try to track down the doctor that was uh, that diagnosed me in the first place when I was four, and. She looked around everywhere uh, uh, on the internet. She couldn't find him. She couldn't find him. And it was. It could have not have been easy for, uh, for for her to basically. I think it was. This was around about the same time when my pop w pop collapsed, um, and it was in hospital. So so it wouldn't have been easy for her to basically try and track down this doctor so I could uh, so so uh, so I can get my get my proof of disability so I can get into work. Plus, also um, dealing with the fact that her that her father's basically in, basically in hospital after he collapsed. Um, so yeah, uh, it wouldn't have been easy. It wouldn't have been easy for her, but but she, but eventually she gave up. Uh, went to my GP went, all together. Went to my GP and recommended that we that we see a I think it was a psychologist. I remember it rightly. Um, my, so I went. So we went to see, went to see the psychologist. Went to see the psychologist, which was next door to the hospital we went to, um, and and he agreed to to retest me for for um, for um, for, uh, for 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 the disability for uh, for the autism testing. Um, and we did that for around about for the next afterwards, next about two, three weeks. During that time, uh, I remember Anzac Day. I remember this brightest day. I remember this brightest day. It was the first. It was the first time I saw me pop since he collapsed. Ironically, it was Anzac Day, and um, and it was Essen and it was Essen versus Colling. It was Essen versus Collingwood. We, we're both Essen supporters, and we both hate Collingwood. So. Totally appropriate, really, and we went there, and um, and I, I haven't told anybody this before, and it's the first time I'm going to be revealing this, really uh, uh, revealing this on camera. Um, but I, I saw me pop, and he, and he was shaking like a leaf. He, um, he had, um, 
it, it doesn't matter if he had his phone in his hand or, or or newspaper or just a little cup of water he was he was shaking um on the outside i was fine w while watching the game with him um but on the inside i feel like i was wanting to ball my fucking eyes out because i never seen me pop like this before and um yeah it was yeah it was oh it was it, it was it was it was terrible really i didn't i didn't I just, I just feel like, I feel like on the inside, I was bawling my eyes out because, you know, I mean, pop means so much to me. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you later on why as well. Um, and and see him in hospital, in, in hospital after he collapsed, and he is shaking like a leaf and that sort of stuff. It was, it was hard to watch really. Uh, luckily, the S <laughs> luckily the Anzac Day game was on because if it didn't, then probably that would have gotten that would have I would have been I would have been freaking in tears probably. But uh, but then but then during that time, that's when I started not go not you know not start not going out as much. I was I was isolating myself in in my room. The only time I went out was with was was when visiting Pop. Um, next, what the next week? I remember we ended up watching again, a game again, which was against Geelong. I remember rightly, uh, um, and uh, and he was he was doing slightly better. And, and within like two weeks, he was in rehab. Uh, yeah, within right a week, he was in rehab, and then within another week, he was actually out of um, out of hospital. So, so yeah, um, so yes, that was great uh, as well. And then basically. Sort of, and then basically he, like, um, then basically he did his recovery uh, at home, most of his recovery at home. Um, so it was it was great to see it. And then by, by that stage, but uh, but he was never he was never himself after the, after this. To be honest, he was never the same again after that collapse. To be honest, he he had to he had to have a cane with him. There was at times where he where he could walk on his own without without his walker. But and the and the cane in his hand, but but not all the time. So he wasn't the same after that, to be honest. And he, and and if he's watching this, which I know he will, he'll probably he'll probably admit that he that he was never the same, you know, after that collapse. Uh, in terms of he, he would agree with what I'm saying, pretty much. Um. So yeah. Um. Then. And, and so now back to the... I know this is probably strange pretty much. I should probably do one by one in terms of the storylines. But I'm trying to do this in order of basically of the, of the timeline pretty much in my head. Um, so then and so then it came... So back on the uh, testing side of things. So we got it done. Uh, the psychologist and I, we got, we got it done. Um, I remember right... I remember right because... The deadline. I remember, there was a deadline for new, you know, um, NDIS, um, uh, for, uh, new NDIS. I can't remember what it would would be called, but um, but yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So it. So yeah. Um, so pretty much. Um, so we got two forms out. One for me, mum to keep. The other one to send out to NDIS. So we sent it out, and we thought, yeah, we'll, we'll get it. And no joke, I'm not kidding from this. From that day, from that day, which was at the end of June, to mid September, I must guess mid September, we heard nothing from them, nothing about it. Um, we heard nothing from them about it. Mum called. Mum called three times over that period. And with three, three different calls, obviously, and nothing. Just heard nothing from them. We heard, we heard, we heard nothing from them, um, really. So, so yeah. During that time frame, obviously, um, you know, my pop was getting better. I celebrated my nineteenth birthday, and, and it felt like for me, I was back to obviously the guy I was at the start of the year. To be to be honest. Uh, for that period of July, August, and 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 for a little part of September, because obviously you know final, AFL finals was coming around. Um, of course, my nineteenth nineteenth birthday. 
uh, pop was get it was getting better, and, we, and every at, at that stage, uh, every Saturday, every Saturday night at, at the time, we would go to the RSL and just hang out. We'll just um, go see you know his mates and and that, which which uh, were some concerned my mates too. So so yeah, um, then so yeah, um, so it was all going well, and then it started to go downhill again and i get the looking back at it now this is the point where it was almost it was almost no coming back from here there was no it was no you know no turnaround or whatever uh not that in a way of base got suicidal or something like that but yeah but uh yeah this was the start of the second like so this like the first one was sort of like a mini downward spiral this one was a second one it was it was going really fast too for me back back then um, so, um, I think, I remember going to a, um, going to, um, going to a haircut, um, going to, uh, going to, for, uh, going with Pop, so Pop and I were, get, were getting haircuts, um, and, and he said, um, and he, and he, and he then said to me, on the way to there, said uh, to the place, he said, um, "I have got, I, I have got uh, the c word, and the c word. When well, I mean the c word, I mean cancer. Uh, but it was, but but you might think, holy shit, that, that that that's a shit situation. But it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as bad as what what I first thought. I, I, I thought, oh shit, what's get what's going on here? But then he told me, he said it was only he. It was only just a little bit of cancer. It, it was that. It was that little that he can actually in his bowel that that was actually um, actually can be oper operable and basically can be removed. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what he basically said to me. It was only it was only tiny bit. It's only tiny bit. It wasn't like freaking worse than that. And we just carried on as well. Um, so yeah, but it didn't contribute a lot to this part of the second downfall, but it was pretty much a, a, a bump in the road for me that time. Then in mid September, out of the blue, I may add, um, we finally got the note the note from NDIS if I was being accepted or not, and I don't I don't know I. I don't know what was fully was in that in that notice, but what from what I've heard, it was basically it, it was it was basically that I it, it, simple terms um, in terms was this. It said that I don't fit the requirements, and in other terms, I was knocked back. And not surprisingly, the friend, uh, uh, not surprisingly, my mum was furious. My stepdad was furious. I was, uh, I was, I was seeing, I was just there going, don't just for them thinking, yo, know, I just don't have a clue in the world. Um, me, uh, the friend, uh, the people that are friends with my family, they were all per that know that know me very well. They were perplexed as all hell because they were like, why would they? Why would they knock me back? Um, and apparently, and apparently, from uh, mum, I think uh, mum said to me one time, uh, said to me that, or I overheard someone say, uh, mum say, say to someone that, or was I think it was in front of me that it said, it said that that I need help. Apparently, I needed help with this thing when I don't, and then the same, and it's the opposite with the other thing that I need help on things I don't. So that that was confused. That was confusing to her, um, and that was the start of the set. That was the start of the second spiral for me. And and from that point on, um, from that well, it wasn't a spiral pretty much. From that day, or from that day on, I looking back at it now, I was a ticking time bomb. It was only a matter of time before before. Boom! It all it all dropped on me at once. It was only a matter of time, and and it, it and so and and it happened 
on and it came to the date of of October the third, twenty nineteen. Um, I was casually just just browsing around on my laptop in the kitchen, um, and then and at, by this time I was start I was starting training with the Moe Cricket Club uh, with their seniors. By this time, um, I had a couple of training sessions. I felt all right, pretty much, um, and then basically it reminded me that oh about my first game uh and then suddenly and, and then after she ended that ended that sentence i just fell down immediately i was like i don't it was it, it was like it was like it was like it was the last thing on my mind really and and then i basic and then i basically got off the laptop i was basically down i was basically I was like depressed in that. Um, closed my laptop. I had my earphone. I had my earphones in by the uh, by the way as well. One of those plug-in ones. I took it off and I went to, went to my room, which is not this room, but it was in my old room, which is my now my brother's room now. And and then I was just like in a ball. I was just you know rocking back and forth, and I was just like I just I was just you know sad and depressed and then my mum came in and was like oh what's wrong Brayden and, and, I, and I told her and I told her and and she and this is and it just it just hits me all at once pretty much um that 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 it you know that feeling where when you see, see your mother and when when you have when you have mental health, pro uh, you know you have mental health problems, and eventually you have a mental breakdown, and then you look up, you see your mother, and that look of helplessness on your mother's, on your family member's face, where where you realise that that person can't, uh, does not know, can't do a thing about it. That's what I experienced. I just felt, it uh, just looked on, on my mum's face. She was so helpless. She looked helpless. She didn't know what to do. Um. The only thing she could do was call was call me pop, basically, um, and yeah, so yeah, and said, "Oh, yeah, I heard you that you not not been happy and that." So so yeah, and I then suddenly, um, and, and yeah, and then basically another thing I admit as I admitted as well, um, throughout that time, um, I was. Not necessarily getting pressured, but I was getting annoying. It was getting annoying most of the time. Uh, throughout that time, uh, people were convinced of trying to, you know, they said not pressure me, but it, yeah, and uh, to get my to at the time to get my uh, to get my driver's license because also I was nineteen, um, and yeah, and another thing I have to admit is I I was born without a father. Um, my father died seven months before I was born in a car accident just close to where I, just close to, to the town of where I live, actually. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, as I said, he, and he was only 21 at the time. He was only 21 years of age when he got, when he, when he died. Um, yeah, and I immediately said that I want to live as long as my dad. I want. I wanted to, and, and, and just to the point now, I'm 23. He died at 21, so I so I want to, you know, live that live the a life that that my dad didn't get to, you know, experience with me, pretty much. So yeah, um, and he said, oh, that was fine, pretty much, and and yeah, yeah, and that, and, and then and then afterwards, I I went on Facebook. And 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 said, um, admitted to all my friends that I and or, or me Facebook my friends was mo was mostly my my friends and family uh, at that time. I immediately said to them, I have mental health issues, you know, because of all this has taken its toll. And then also I also said that I would be um, taking an indefinite break. Uh, from cricket because the reason why I did that was cricket's a a game we have to concentrate and I didn't and I didn't have belief in myself that 
I was down and basically I would concentrate on, you know, on cricket and that. Um, yeah, so that's why I stopped it. I stopped that pretty much. Um, and, and, and almost everyone, fr everyone on, uh, on friends on Facebook at that time actually commented and, and supported and that sort of stuff, uh, which was great, which was great, which was great to see, uh, very much. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and eventually I went and, and, and eventually my, eventually my, um, the, the, the um, psychologist that actually did, you know, did the testing on me actually turned into my counselor for, for about, about three, four years, um, I believe. So, which was great, great. It was just great for him because, uh, cause he, um, he listened to me for an hour talks and that mostly on the phone because of the whole because of the pandemic and that uh yeah and uh and then yeah and surprisingly enough um about uh, just about over about over a month later um i was hanging out with school uh, with school friends uh with, with friends from school at the local uh because because it, it doesn't happen anymore um, but we have like this sort of like bomb, bonfire event uh, where everyone in the town you know, goes to uh, over in the local park here in Maui. Um, I went to there with a couple of um, a couple of school, a couple of friends from school, um, and um, and yeah, and and saw a couple more, saw several more while I was down there. Um, and some, and, and most of, and probably most of all of my school friends don't know this story, to be honest. They, they, they don't know this story. Uh, yeah, they don't, and they, they didn't even know at the time that I had a mental breakdown about a month earlier. They didn't know that. I, I chose not to tell, tell them because I thought, you know, not ready to tell that start that side yet. Now, obviously I do. So yeah. Um, so Yeah. Uh, that was pretty much the start of pretty much my rebuild, pretty much. Um, and then 2020, um, hopeful of getting into, getting back and in, getting into the workplace again. That was squandered by the COVID pandemic. Let's put it that way. Um, so yeah, and, and even for that for that time, we tried, but basically didn't work pretty much. Um, my mum, my mum tried to tried to several it was teased several teased to me well not teased but yeah taught, told me several several times throughout that period that she was going to appeal uh, NDI's decision to knock me back um, and, yeah and um, and I, I don't know when she lost this appeal I don't know when probably she probably she uh, probably after watching this video she'll probably tell the story about that. Um, but yeah, then, um, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, then, and then obviously, um, and now I started this YouTube channel late 20, late in 2020, uh, pretty terrible time to start YouTube during a pandemic, but anyways, uh, yeah, but it was a really, but it was a really good, you know, hobby, uh, for, for some reason, even though it was dependent, had the pandemic, 2020 was a slightly better year than it was in 2019, uh, only slightly. Uh, it was, it, it, but yeah, but you, but with your, it, but with your mental rebuild, it, you have to start somewhere, and and the pandemic was it. Um, twenty twenty one uh, again was it was teased with uh, with the possibility of work, but never nothing really came about really. Um, and I started being more serious, more more uploading on YouTube and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, de and then uh, then came twenty twenty two. Um, which I think, especially, this is, this is what it was probably, to be honest, the best year. Um, pro probably that and also last year were the t were probably the two best years of my life outside um, after of my after school life. Let's be fair. Um, thanks to two, uh, thanks to affected year with with mental health. In 2019, and then obviously the pandemics in 21 and 22, uh, in 20, 20, uh, in 20 and 21, and then, then obviously the last two years have been have been great for me. Finally getting to work, um, a bit of ups and downs during the way during along the way as well, and obviously and obviously booked end the year 
uh, by go by by camping at Port Ferry with my fam with my family over um, over in uh, over in Geelong, uh, just to cap off one, uh, probably one of the best years of my life, pretty much. And and then it's sort of um, 2023 wasn't as good because some things tainted it, like of course breaking my finger at the start of the year. Um, but but other than that, it was actually pretty good. It was actually a pretty good pretty good year. And again, it was capped off by going over to Geelong um, to see friends and family over there for New Year's Eve, which was, which was great. We did, I didn't go to Port Ferry that year, but uh, but yeah. So um so yeah. So as you as you tell as you as you probably told tell by the by the by the vlog by the two vlogs that that I did over there. So so yeah. Um, so the point, the moral of this story is, is, um, is number one, um, if you, if, if you, if any 19, any 19, 18, 19 year old 19 year olds think that, well, some of them think that it's just so, so simple for all these things, like getting a simple job, you know, get buying a house, moving, moving out, uh, moving out of your parents' house. Is so simple. You are kidding yourself because I because I'm the living proof of it. Um, I had to wait three years for it. Uh, it had to wait three years, uh, three years for a job. So, so yeah. So not all. So it it doesn't turn out that way as well. Second, secondly, uh, with the right people, and, and secondly, with the right people around you, um, you can you can overcome. These you know mental health you know I don't know if you call demons, uh, but uh, but mental health problems it, it, with, with the right people around you, uh, with with, with, the, with with all the right support, then you could actually do it, uh, and do it. And and number four and, and number three, um, uh, number three as well. You can come back from these. I've seen, heard many other, and, and it's and. and it's pre I, I, I still to this day very I'm sad that people um that pe that kids like 17 18 19 I I always get sad when I hear those uh, that ages between 17 to 20 um commit suicide that that that's for me sad really especially guys like me who have a disability um for example um I find that very very sad because because, because one that could have been like me, that could have been me, but two, you know, they they had they they had long, massive things ahead of them, and and then boom, they they either get struck down uh, with mental health problems, which are which are so debilitating that that they can't come back from. Um, but but on the proof that that you can come back from these, I'm, I'm not saying that that I. That I would have gone su suicidal if I didn't admit that that I had mental health issues, uh, that I was depressed. But um, but uh, but I, I definitely would not have gone there. But because I've got got loving family, loving family, uh, that support me. But uh, but uh, but you, you ever know, in about a year or so, I probably would have maybe. But um, but instead, um, but instead I'm here. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. I've uh, got a, got a job. I've got a job. Got a loving family, and and I've got, and I've got, and I've got, and I've got high hopes for the future. Uh, uh, that's for sure. So um, so yeah. So that's probably the end of this video. Uh, the, the most revealing video. I uh, I know it must have been tough for myself to, you know, admit those things. But as I said, um, this is from my perspective. I, as I said, um. Other people have uh, in my family have their perspectives on the on this issue. This is this was this was my story. This was my story about that um, from my perspective, and um, and yeah. So so yeah. Um, so yeah. So like this. So please like this video. P pretty please share this around to anybody who's also been, been affected by mental health. Or, uh, um, just to prove that that, that 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 particular person, for example, is not is not alone in it. I've lived it, um, and and proof that you can come back from it. Uh, comment um, comment down uh, comment down below. At the same time as well, comment down below. Have you had family? 
uh, a family member or a friend that that also was infected was um, also had mental health issues, um, either you know sad ones or, or a happy one, a sad one where unfortunately ends up ends up in a bad way, it ends up in a bad situation, or in a good one where like me came it came out the other side um, fine fine and dandy. Um, you know, you know. Uh, I would love to hear, love to hear your mental health, all your mental health stories. Uh, and 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 the, and the last thing, somewhere down there, somewhere, uh, click on the big red button, which is label subscribe. Uh, but until next time, guys, I will see you all later.